Good morning everybody and welcome to this service on the 5th of September, a recorded service for North Timmouth Community Church. Uh, it's particularly relevant for those who are unable to join us in the main hall today, but it's also applicable for anybody who's uh, tuning into our website and wishes uh, to watch. The theme today is God Needs You. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for the opportunity of being able to share with you, even if it is remotely by video, and we know that your same Holy Spirit works through us wherever we are. Please bless us this day as we come before you with our praise and our thanks, and as we listen and as we share in the songs and the readings and the message. May this be a day which is important to us, and we ask it in your precious name, Amen. Just one notice at uh, the start of the service, there is nothing prepared within this recorded service for communion, but obviously if you want to stop the video at any time and take communion in the quietness of your home, or if you wish to do that at the end of the service, then clearly you're free to do that. We're using some of the recorded songs that uh, Helen Hillard um, has sung for us over many months. And we'll start off with uh, two now, and uh, then we'll come back. Let your rain flood the 
Christ that's Jesus. So pour over me your words of love. Pour over me. I come, lay my burden down, gladly at your feet. I'm opening up my heart. Come make this joy complete. Oh. Receive your peace. Pour over me, pour over me. Let your rain flood this thirsty soul. Pour over me, your waves of love. Pour over me. Thank you, Helen, for the songs that you've prepared for us. We've used many of them over several months and they've been a blessing and remain so. Let's pray for the needs of our church. Heavenly Father, you know that there have been many needs during the COVID-19 outbreak and also because of other circumstances in people's health and family conditions. We bring you our praise that time and time again, as we brought needs to you and asked for your intervention, you've done so in miraculous ways in some cases and in other ways, Lord, you are doing so. As people recover from the skills of surgeons and from operations and their health is being restored to a better place than they were in before. We commit to you, Lord, each person within our fellowship who at this time needs a special touch from you either as they face operations, wait for appointments, or as they recover. We pray especially this morning, Lord, for Desmond Thomas, who had a fall recently and was hospitalised. Lord, you know this is an elderly gentleman who loves you much. We pray, Lord, that you would restore him uh, to health after this fall, and that he would know your presence in this. And be with his family as well, Lord, with Marcus and Pat, and uh, the grandchildren who love him very much that any anxiety would be removed by your peace in this situation. Lord, we pray for those in our church who struggle with members of their family who are finding life difficult in all sorts of ways. Lord, may they have the faith and the strength to keep witnessing, to be brave and to share Jesus and to pray and believe that you will intervene and that you will bring good out of the situation for those who are praying, for those, Lord, who know you, who love you, and who are called according to your purpose. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. We're going to have one more song from Helen, a song called Everyone Needs Compassion. It leads us into um, our reading, a time of prayer, and the sharing of the message, which forms the rest of this video.
Let's pray just before we share the message that God has laid on my heart this morning. Heavenly Father, we commit to you this time and we ask that you would help us to open our minds and hearts to a message that says God needs you. In Jesus' name, Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. So now, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making this his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favour, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. I wonder if any of you, like me, saw one of the news programmes on the uh, television this week, where one of the items came from a hop farm in England and the owner was being interviewed because the, the harvest is abundant but she's had real difficulty you know getting enough workers to bring in the harvest in the short amount of time that she has. Now the interview really um, was concentrating on the problems she is having in bringing in Eastern European workers which were a benefit for her in years past and the problems of recruiting locally. But my mind was taken to her comments about the harvest. And you can see from the picture that was there that the hop harvest was really plentiful. But, as she said, the labourers were few. And it reminded me of uh, something that Jesus had said. And also something from the 85th Psalm verses 8 to 13 that Lorraine read to us at the end of last week's service. Let me read it to you. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give us what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Let's read that again, or a part of it. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. About four or five years ago, John Kelly, John Swain, Keith and I used to meet every other Wednesday evening in Richard Newton Hall um, to pray, and specifically we were praying for outreach. And you know, on one Wednesday, the Lord laid on our hearts as we prayed a verse that Jesus spoke in Luke chapter 10, verse 2. The harvest, Jesus said, is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Isn't that true? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. But the encouragement is, ask the Lord of the harvest, ask God to send out workers into the harvest field. Now, there are certain things about that, of course, that we could go and ask God and discount ourselves. The title of this talk this morning is, God Needs You, and that includes me. We aren't discounted. We may be one of the labourers he's looking for. And there are three things that strike me about the assurance of that verse. On no occasion have I ever felt anything other than God wants to bring growth at North Timoth Community Church. Many have felt the same over the years. And I believe that the promise 
is no different today, despite all that COVID-19 has thrown at us and despite the current unsettling resignation of our community pastor. The second thing is that it's God who provides the harvest and he has told us, as far as North Timoth Community Church, that there is a plentiful harvest and we're in a time of reaping. The third thing is that God has also told us that the reason we can't bring in the harvest is down to the lack of labourers. Let me ask you some questions about God's promise. I spoke in Richard Newton Hall in 2011 before um, I was called to join the church, before I became a member of the review team which produced God's plan or purpose and before I was called to be an elder. And I remember clearly that on that occasion I suggested that you might like to look out of the windows down over the rooftops of the hundreds and hundreds of houses that you could see and imagine just how many people lived in them and how many people God wanted to reach. And the challenge then is the challenge today. The challenge then was, is our vision big enough to believe that God is able to more than fill the hole to the extent that we have to consider alternative ways of meeting? Do you and I believe that God wants to work through us here at North Timberth Community Church and that we have a part to play? Do you and I believe that God needs us? Do you and I believe that God has commissioned us to be a part of the labourers? Note the encouragement to pray was for labourers, not labourer. The work of evangelism and outreach was never just that of a single person. No, it's that of each of us. Note also that aid should not be a deterrent to being a labourer. Of course there are limitations in some ways, but in other ways there are considerable benefits that age brings and experience in the way in which we share. Let me bring you some encouragement from the Bible about our importance in winning souls for Christ. All of these come from the second letter to the Corinthians. The first uh, we've read, but I'll repeat, chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favour I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favour, and now is the day of salvation. You and I have heard the good news. You and I have received the good news. You and I have been born again. You and I have great joy because of what God has done within us. We're co-workers with God, co-workers to make sure that the message we've received goes out to others and that they are too given the opportunity to receive it. Second reading is chapter 4 verses 5 to 7. For we preach that which is not of ourselves but of Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as servants for Jesus sake. For God who said let light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Yes, we've been born again. Yes, we have this treasure, this spiritual benefit within us. But it's within jars of clay. Clay is fragile. It breaks. It gets buffeted. It can get damaged and so can we. And it's a reminder to us that we work with God in extreme difficulty if we do not accept that the power to bring people to Christ, this all-surpassing power, is from God and not from us. 
And the third reading is from chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. God does need us. God does want us to be carriers of the message of reconciliation. God does want us to be ambassadors for him to those needy people around that he wishes to win back to him. But this call to be co-workers or labourers or ambassadors is not an easy one. When Paul wrote the messages we've just read, he did not do so without spelling out the difficulties and neither did Jesus. Paul made very clear that the spiritual battle that is involved in winning souls for Christ is a great one. In chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians and verse 4 he said, For the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. If we think that the people we desire will come and that it will just happen without some effort on our part, we are mistaken. When in souls for Christ is a role for every believer and at North Timoth Community Church, we fervently believe that the leadership of the church should be working together as co-workers with Christ and with each other to ensure that each of us is prepared for the works of service required to reap the harvest that God has promised. What's involved in that? First of all, our willingness to play a part. Secondly, our preparation by study and prayer and supporting each other to tackle long lost souls for whom we may have prayed and witnessed for ages. Thirdly, a clear vision and heart for the lost souls that live around this area. Fourthly, faith that God has promised is able and will deliver if we work with him and not against him. And fifthly, acceptance that too much of our church life is taken up by things that are not the priority to win souls. We should have a constant focus on activity and prayer to win souls. Let me ask you another question. How do you and I want to be seen by those who seek to find Christ or those we seek to bring to Christ? You know, despite all his problems and losses, there are some wonderful examples of what God saw in the life of Job and why God was able to allow Job to suffer to prove to Satan the enduring faithfulness and witness that Job had. Let's read a small part from Job chapter 29 verses 23 to 24. They waited for me as for showers and drank in my words as the spring rain. When I smiled at them they scarcely believed it. The light of my face was precious to them. Is that how we are seen as Christians? The light of the glory of God that has shone on us and saved us being reflected in all that we do and noticed by those around who need Christ? Or are we showing a picture that is very different and actually distracting those we seek to win for Christ? I want to come towards the end of this message this morning with two examples, different people, different situations, but both responding to a call from God and offering their lives and their abilities with the aid of the Holy Spirit to winning folks for Christ. Gladys Aylward was a simple woman who did what she believed God had called her to do. So in 1920 she sailed to China where she opened a home for orphan children who'd been left to starve or wander the streets until the government placed them in wretched warehouses. 
She'd read the scripture. If you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs. That comes from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 10 to 11. When the Japanese invaded China, Gladys was forced to flee. She ended up on the island of Formosa with over a hundred children to care for. In the face of extreme difficulty and danger, she devoted her life to becoming a mother to each of them. Years later, when she was publicly honoured, she explained her amazing work like this. I didn't choose this. I was led into it by God. I'm not really more interested in children than I am in other people. But God gave me to understand this. This is what he wanted me to do. So I did it. Wow, what a challenge. God gave me to understand this. This is what he wanted me to do. So I did it. If you want a further local example of a woman uh, who has served God in similar ways, read Anita's book, or better still, ask her. She and John are sharing jointly the work around Al Shaddai with other people. But this is a call of God to the desperate and the needy, enabled by the Holy Spirit and resourced in all sorts of ways. There are many ways in which we can serve God and win folks for Christ. There are many excuses we can use. And one of those is age. And you know, age shouldn't be a problem that deters us from accepting our value to Christ and his need for us and his continuing call on our lives to labour for him in the harvest field that's ready. Do we really want to see the fruit go to waste? Or do we want to reap it? My friend John Gardner is somebody I refer to reasonably often. He lives up in Suffolk now, but he was my first pastor outside of an Anglican church. Um, and he was also the best man at our wedding. John was in his 70s when he felt a call from God to witness to uh, Russian speaking people and others in Eastern Europe. God gave him a desire to uh, lead teams uh, and he took them to places near St. Petersburg where they had camps with children, needy children, desperately poor and needy children. And for two weeks at a time, the gospel was shared in activities and games and just ways of loving. It wasn't easy. Russia's a long way away. It's three hours ahead of us. The environment is hostile. You need all sorts of permissions to go. There are language barriers. There are cultural barriers. There's suspicion. But there are needy children. There are needy adults. And I know there were difficulties because I joined him one summer and experienced them for myself. They were immense and they were only overcome in prayer. But the gospel was preached. God then led John to offer English learning to those interested in joining groups that he led. But the groups were English learning but in Bible study. And that ministry today involves about 20 to 30 people. And John spends hours every week in one hour appointments with either Russian or Russian speaking people going through books of the Bible and either encouraging them in their faith or leading them to experience Jesus for the first time and to a position where they are given the opportunity to become Christians. Let me read you what John said. The surprising thing was the discovery that they were not interested in me speaking Russian. They only wanted to speak English. So I communicate partly in Russian, mainly in English. This gives them excellent opportunities to practice their English, which I'm happy with. Occasionally I can help them with grammar, punctuation, pronunciation, etc. That is definitely secondary though, and only occasional. 
the principal thing is Bible study. It's interesting to know that they in turn share these studies with their wives if they are married and their family if they are old enough. One or two simply love sharing the gospel with friends, colleagues and with other people online. So the ripples spread far and wide. As you know, I belong to a language site called Tandem. A few times during the week I'm able to share the gospel and answer questions people have about the Bible. Old age is no barrier to serving the Lord. One thing I would impress upon anyone desiring to serve the Lord though is that you need to get to know your Bible really well. It's not our opinion that matters nor our opinion of the Word of God. It's the Word of God itself that matters. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's His Word, not mine. I often pray, Lord, tattoo this Word on their hearts. Tattoos are virtually impossible to remove, you know. I want to leave them with a healthy deposit of Holy Scripture, which the Holy Spirit can use long after my or anyone else's voice is silent. Two examples and a third if you include Anita as well. Very different but examples of people who heard a call, saw a need and responded to what God was asking them to do. The difficulties they faced, the problems they endured, the age that they were became no barriers to joining in and becoming labourers for Christ in bringing in his harvest field. In conclusion then, soul winning is a job for all of us. There may be different ways in which that can be worked out, but it is our work. We are included in the labourers that Jesus referred to. We have treasure to share, countless examples of God's provision and love for us, knowledge of the work of salvation in our lives and the potential to be excellent ambassadors, as it were, God's mouthpieces. God needs you and me. He needs us to co-work in the willing of souls. And North Dimmouth Community Church needs you and me to work for God to win souls. The question is, will we be obedient? The challenge is a positive one. Let's be obedient. Let's do it and see God bless us. Let's see our hall too small for the numbers of people who wish to come. Let's deal with that type of problem and not the others that so often submerge us into not thinking about the main purpose of our role within the church. Let's pray and then we'll say the grace. And may I say thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Thank you for your message, Lord. Thank you for wanting us. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you that you want us to co-work with you to spread this message far and wide to the needy people and in fulfilment, Lord, of the vision that you've placed in the hearts and minds of people within North Timoth Community Church. Lord, may we surrender our work to win souls into your hands. May we believe, Lord, that there is a harvest and that we are part of the labour force that will bring in the fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.